Hello everyone, Joe from Central Jersey Conrail and Inscale and welcome back. This is episode 15, part two. It's gonna be the second part of our three-part series on constructing the main line for the Sayahur Secondary. And we're gonna be following the construction from Lakehurst all the way down to uh, Englishtown. So part two, we're gonna be focusing on the le uh, track from Lakewood down to Englishtown. And I'm also gonna be highlighting my techniques that I use for laying track. How to prep the turnouts, how to put in the flex track, and how to glue it down. So I know in part one I discussed that I would be releasing these parts in every uh, three weeks, but I run into the problem that every single model railroad has run into one time or another, and that is budget. So due to my budget constraints, it's kind of slowed down the construction process a little bit, but we're still mo moving forward. We haven't stopped. It's just that I just have to slowly purchase what I need when I need it. And so that's why this segment's running a little behind on the three-week time frame. So with that being said, why don't you sit back and watch how we constructed the main line from Lakewood all the way down to Englishtown. Okay, so here we are getting started on the uh, staging area for the Southern Secondary. So now what this area is that we're constructing here is a hidden staging area. So this will be underneath the scenery on the Glidden Sand Spur. And what this area is for is to simulate trains that would be going north on the Southern Secondary towards Red Bank. So when a train arrives from the main line, the train will pull into the center track, and then the engine will cut off using a magnetic uncoupler, and it'll use that tail track to the right there that you can't see behind the helix. Then the locomotive will run around its train and grab these staged cars that will be on the track closest to you, the third track. So as you can see, this is very early in the process because the track hasn't even been laid in Lakehurst yet. So when I started doing track work, I wanted to get this section done and, and make this a priority because I knew that I was going to be putting track above it and I wouldn't be able to work in the space down below. So as with all my other track in the hidden stage areas, I'm just uh, tacking this down with track nails. So I gotta really make sure that this track work here on this staging area is really bulletproof because once scenery goes in and if there's any kind of problems or hiccups, you know, I'm gonna have to tear out all the scenery to get to work on it. So here I am testing all my track with a uh, free rolling freight car just to uh, make sure that there's nothing that needs to be fixed. So here we are uh, soldering the track feeders. Once I'm done, I'll connect it to the bus line underneath. I ran a separate bus line just for the staging area. Okay, so now we're getting started laying track on, uh, for the main line from Lakewood down to uh, Englishtown. First step in the process was I went ahead and glued down my cork road bed just as I did in part one. So there's nothing different, nothing new here.
Here we are getting ready to connect that turnout to that curve. Uh, I'm going to put some feeder wires in there. Then I'm going to go ahead and put in the rail joints and then solder it. So you may ask why am I removing ties from the end of the turnout? Well, I just like to give a little extra room for that rail jointer to slide on there because I don't want to be forcing that rail up on the turnout because I want that turnout to lay as flat as possible. So what's going on here is I'm trying to connect and go ahead and glue everything down and weigh it and let it sit overnight and then come back and get started again uh, in the next day. Okay, so here we are getting started for the next day. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm just going ahead and prepping my turnouts. So when you're cutting your uh, ties off of the rails, I'm just using a sprue nipper. Uh, they're actually pretty good because they can get in there and they've got a real nice point on there to cut that to plastic. Okay, so here I'm just uh, drilling the holes in the road bed for the wires and the drawbar. I use a quarter inch drill bit for both holes. Uh, Tortoise recommends a quarter inch for their uh, their spring wire to operate the turnout. So I just do the same thing for the frog wire. Now on the bottom side of the microengineering turnout on that frog, there's actually like a little hole. And what I do is I try to get the solder nice and liquidy and then put the, hole, the wire right into that hole there and then let it dry. This way it's nice and solid. So this is actually an interesting track configuration here. It came up when I was doing my planning on the brown paper and by moving that turnout for the spur line that I'm putting in closer to us and it gave me room to move the turnout for the uh, runaround further out so this way we can fit more cars on the runaround. So that's just a good example of when you're, you're, you're doing your pre-planning in, in three dimensions you know, with the brown paper and the mock-ups, you know, there's, those little things will come up and uh, it'll, it'll save you time. So this is a good time to bring up this tip. So make sure when you're cutting this track that you're cutting it straight and flat because uh, otherwise you're going to have to recut it and you're going to waste rail. A lot of times I was getting lazy and I was holding my rail nippers on an angle and it would chew up the rail. Other thing is make sure you're filing with a nice metal, uh, metal file because it'll make those rail joiners go on that much easier. And I have two sets of files in my uh, layout room. I have one set that I use for just plastics and the other one I use for just metal. And I make sure I mark the packaging because you know if you're building a nice uh, scratch built plastic model and you go to use your uh, metal files you'll have all kinds of metal burrs and it'll chew up the plastic. So here we are installing the uh, team track down here in Freehold. Okay, so those two little gray tools that I've been using, these uh, they're made by MLR. Um, I never really heard of them, and when I was a friend of mine was getting out of the hobby, I bought out all this stuff, and he had a bunch of them in the bottom of the box for me. And let me tell you something, those things are so invaluable. The, the one tool that you saw, that a little square block, was for build, bending your curves. That straight one's to make sure you're nice and straight. And then they have an, another one that you saw me doing uh, for soldering joints. It locks the joint in when, when you uh, go to solder. So very invaluable. They're very, very inexpensive, very popular. You can get them off eBay. I think I just looked it up. It was like they're on sale for like 18 bucks. So while we're at this scene, this is a good time to bring this up. Uh, I've, after filming all this video and putting up all the track and get everything running, um, I was cleaning up the layout room and I went to go test fit one of the tortoise switch machines and I realized that my track feeders are in my way. Um, there's a couple spots where the track feeders, I put them in too close to the turnout and it's going to interfere with the tortoise. So at a later date, I'm going to have to move those feeders and put them in a spot where they won't be in the way. That's just something you should consider when you're putting in your track feeders. It's just where's your turnout motor going to be and is this going to be in the way. Also, another another word about these feeders. So if you notice, a lot of times I was putting them underneath the rail joint and then pushing them up and soldering from underneath. But there was some locations where I couldn't do that, you know, where the uh, the support for the, uh, the sub roadbed was. I, I then had to 
put the feeder wires on the side of the rail. Okay, so here I am, I'm using the MLR tool, and I'm just checking the track to make sure it's straight and there's no uh, bends or kinks in it. And this is a good time to do that because, you know, like I said, with that latex caulk, you got plenty of working time before it sets up. Okay, so now we're going to work on the section for the ba uh, Mammoth Battlefield. Um, now, this little segment here is going to show you all of the stuff from beginning to end. You know, the planning with the brown paper, installing the sub road bed, and uh, I didn't get the cork installation in and uh, or the prep of the cork and then right into track work. Track work here is fairly level, so all I did was I set my height around approximately three inches above the uh, bench work. Then I set my uh, risers in and screwed them into the bench work. And I laid the sub road bed on top, and glued it, and then I used uh, coarse thread uh, drywall screws to screw it down. work is very solid there. I'm just I'm putting all my weight on that screw gun. That's why it's bending away. Now. Okay, so when you're working a nice big long curve like this, just take your time and just work the track a little at a time, little at a time, because you don't want if you try to do too much too fast, you'll kink the rail and, and you'll have to start all over. glue the first few inches of this curve down because uh, I don't want to glue the whole thing down because I'm hesitant of how I'm going to connect to the next section with the track. So now all i got to do here is connect the feeders and put the bus line in and uh, this section will be good to go and uh, that's going to put a wrap on our track work. And so there you have it. The main line's up and running down to Englishtown. Now it's not fully operational right now. We still have to work on our control panels and install our tortoise switch machines. You know, I can run some trains, but the only problem is because there's no spring tension on the drawbars or the turnouts, you know, I am get, getting some derailments. And so I don't know if you guys are picking up on it, but I definitely notice when I'm working, it seems that I've gotten more attuned to the details of making sure that when we're putting this track together, that we're making sure the rail joiners are all nice and smooth and clean. Because it, it, when you're working with code 55, you know, your tolerance is a lot less than working with code 80. So this way, by making sure that everything's all done properly and just taking your time and slowing down, you know, this causes a lot less derailments and problems in the future. Okay, so probably at this point by watching me put track down in the staging yard and also watching me work in Lakehurst, you probably noticed that I was using a lot of insulated rail joiners. Now this is kind of just an old habit that I had from my in-track days when we were using the, the Pico uh, insulfrogs, frogs and we would, we would insulate each uh, rail to make sure that there was no short circuit when you threw that switch. Well, what I really noticed when we we're putting the code 55 together with the insulated rail joiners, that you know it just wasn't coming together clean. We had I had a lot of a lot of tracking problems with wheels and stuff. 
So what I did is I went out and I started discussing with other model raritors uh, through social media and through Facebook and all that, and and finding out what the, how they were dealing with it. And lo and behold, you know, with the microengineering turnouts, they come and they're already you know quote unquote DC friendly. You know, they got the jumpers in and the frogs are insulated, so there's no short circuit when you throw that draw bar. So with that, I went back and I just stopped using insulated rail joiners altogether, except for when I have the district power boundaries. That's the only time I'll put a plastic uh, insulated rail joiner in there. And that's just to give an extra level of protection to make sure that you're not gonna short circuit across the two uh, power districts. So once I shifted over to just using all metal rail, rail joiners and soldering, you know, the track just came together so much better and it's running so much more smoother. So now that tra I got trains running, now if you notice, I've also been doing some other little things around the layout. You know, I started working on my car card system so I could start tracking my cars and, and establishing a traffic flow so I can see how many more cars am I going to need? Is 100 cars enough? How many more box cars am I going to need? Et cetera, et cetera. So I went ahead and started setting up my car cards. Um, I went and got some bill boxes and temporarily mounted those up. And also I started doing bad order cards to track, you know, which ones don't have the new wheel sets. and all. So I'm going to go ahead and do a whole nother segment on my car cards. And I'm going to release that very shortly, probably in a couple days after this segment comes out. So if you're interested in operations, you know, take a look at how I set this up and, and follow along because it's, it's, it's still in progress. It's a work in progress. There's still a lot more to be done, a lot more research, and, and we got to work on the way bills. So, you know, check out that segment when it comes out in a couple days. Also, some other projects I've been working on on the side besides the main episodes is I also started working on, I got some new locomotive acquisitions. So we're going to be, I'm going to do a segment and walk you guys through a, a quick decoder drop-in installation. And also, I'm going to show you how to program it using Decoder Pro through the, uh, through the computer. So I anticipate a, a segment about that coming out in, in about a, a week or two. So, you know, keep your eyes open for that and sit down and watch how we do that. Okay, so one last thought for this segment. So I put up them albums on Facebook and, it, you know, the detail each location and how it's being constructed. And I've noticed that there's some people that are clicking that they like the Tom's Reveal Industrial folder, but, but they may not be like in the freehold folder and it's pretty neat and see what's going on i don't know if everybody's picking sides you know we're getting ready for a little competition here but you know it's pretty a neat little dynamic that's going on so for everybody who's following the toms River industrial segment yes i'm sorry we did not get to lay track in this segment you know with that budgetary constraint thing that i was discussing earlier in the episode i just i'm running behind schedule on that so we're what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna make a whole separate segment on just the Toms Around Industrial. So I think I'm gonna call it like 15 part four maybe, I don't know, but the, the, you'll have a whole episode just on how I'm putting up the Toms Around Industrial. So this way, you know, you guys who picked the Toms Around Industrial to follow, I don't wanna upset you. We'll get to it, I promise. So, you know, I'm standing right here and over my shoulder you can see Freehold. Um, I'm just gonna tell everybody so far, this is turning out to be my favorite area on the layout right now. Freehold came together so well. I'm so pleased with the outcome. Uh, you know, going down to Freehold for years and watching trains go to the Freehold and, and deliver at, at Freehold Lumber and, and the team track, you know, it's, I had certain scenes in mind, you know, like the, the Highway 9 overpass. And I'm just very, very happy with the way it's turning out. I think this is gonna be a great spot to watch trains and I can't wait to finish it. So that's going to put a wrap on episode 15, part two. I hope everybody enjoyed following along. I hope you're picking up some tips and techniques to use on your layout. Make sure you come back to join us for episode 15, part three. So as we start installing the fascia and start putting in control panels. And if you're a first time viewer and you like this episode, please subscribe to our channel so you can follow along. All right, I'll see you next time. I'm going to go run some trains.